Hey guys, this is BenRob0329, and today we are delving back into working on the Infinite Ikea. I've run into a little bit of a problem after doing some background boring stuff on basic definition APIs and functions and things that isn't interesting for the video at all, but does set us up for making the first piece of furniture. Before we do that, I need to do a little change to how we spawn the racks in because I found out that Mindtest does not support collision boxes larger than three nodes to any side. So essentially what that means is that you have a three, this is how big, just on one axis, but this is how big you can have your collision boxes. If you try to make this come out to say, if you try to have this come out to say here, it won't work because the player will just be able to pass through this spot into the whole rest of the node. Um, you can, of course, have obviously it come down and up, but you can't have it be in any given direction more than one node to the to both sides. The problem is that the racks in the warehouse are seven node, actually eight nodes high technically because it's one node in the ground. So as you can imagine, I was not real happy about this when I first found out about it. Uh, in fact, I was very frustrated. Uh, but apparently if you increase the collision detection beyond this or even slightly more than it, it things get very, very performance heavy very quickly because of the amount of things it has to check. Now as for why we don't just make the whole mesh a collision object uh, like other game engines, probably for the same reason we don't have a real physics engine, but whatever, I'll deal with it. So the way we're going to fix this is not with crudely drawn chairs, but rather with the contents of the rack. Each rack is going to have kits on the bottom and then some assembled furniture that I couldn't draw smally, and then some more top stock stuff. And each of these... And it was at this point that my camera battery died. But basically what I was trying to say was that we're going to make some invisible nodes to make sure that you can't walk through the shelves. Okay, after a lot of work and rewriting it a few times, uh, we finally have the filler nodes for the racks. Um, I've also cleaned this up quite a bit, so now we essentially just have the biome definition and some global stuff set. Um, and uh, a loading block modifier to place the filler nodes, because that's honestly just the best way to do it. All the nodes are defined in here. Um, it's just four for now because I don't have anything real fancy going on in the warehouse biome, but we're going to add some more content here in a sec. And then over here in schematics.lua, I am defining the filler schematic as well as the rack schematic as opposed to using the predefined one. So it starts off by defining just the um, <clears throat> the the node tables for the uh, the schematics that basically I use this name instead of typing this out all the time. Then the uh, the base thing for the warehouse schematic, then the entirety of the filler schematic, then a merge function that I definitely didn't pull the code from Stack Overflow. Then we define a concrete layer because the way that schematics work, which is not very well documented, is it, start, is it split into layers. So it starts off in the lowest corner and goes forward on the x-axis all the way to the end. Then it goes up and does the same thing, up, 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 until you get to the top, and then it moves over on the z-axis and does the same thing over and over again. So basically, this defines the a row of concrete in its entirety for the entire length of the schematic, and then the alternating racks and concrete for the rows that have racks in them. And then we just go ahead and we merge several of those layers together into the global 
rack schematic variable and that's about it. But up next, I'd like to add some uh, actual content to this. And because I did some work on the furniture API earlier this week, I'm going to model the first piece of furniture for the game, which is going to be on the front cover of the IKEA 2019 catalog because, I mean, where else am I going to find just pictures and crap of IKEA furniture? I'm going to do this pink armchair because it's on the front cover. And why the heck not?
Hey, so basically, I forgot to unmute myself after all the timeline stuff, but I'm doing a little bit of post-narration, so... Yeah, while I was doing all the furniture API stuff earlier in the week that I recorded this, because I didn't edit this in that same week, uh, I added this little box here uh, that will hold the contents of the kit as defined in the API. Uh, it's got transparent handles, uh, and when you open it, uh, the contents of it kind of spring out, and you get the little chair there. So the chair just has some temporary textures at the moment. Nothing uh, permanent by any stretch of the imagination, just something to get some color on there. Uh, and here I have screwed up and forgotten to flip the collision box when I flipped the model later on so that it would place correctly. So you just have to give me a moment while uh, pre-production me fixes that. But yeah, now it, now it works properly. So that's essentially what it is. It's just a, a little bit of furniture just to add some stuff. I didn't get time to swan it in yet. And it's probably going to be a little bit longer before I do some more development work. I'm going to announce this at the end of this video uh, that I am not going to be trying to keep a weekly upload schedule anymore because YouTube is not what I want to do for a career at this point in my life. And I am not able to do a great many things that I've wanted to do because of the amount of time trying to upload videos this regularly takes. So I know that I've just gotten around to getting a decent upload schedule just a few months back, but I can't do it. And I can't do it in good conscience knowing that there's probably something else that I want to pursue as my actual career. So yeah, sorry about that. But if you like this video, Thank you for watching, and if you want to see more things in the future, because I'm still going to make videos, just on my own time, uh, then please subscribe and comment down below for what you would like to see in a future video. Thanks for watching.